Hey guys, happy 2020. We're here to start a new year. And I think it's very interesting that it's the year 2020. So I think what we should be praying for this year is 2020 vision, 2020 spiritual vision that is. There's been a lot of confusion in the world. There's been a lot of confusion in the church, a lot of confusion in families. And we really need the grace and light of the Holy Spirit. So what I want to focus on this week in the... Be Beginning of Advent, during Advent, I focused on the first three mysteries, the first three joyful mysteries of the Rosary. What I'd like to do is focus on the last two, the presentation in the temple and the finding of the child Jesus in the temple, because I think they hold the key for us in getting that 2020 vision that we need to start really moving forward in faith and with the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's look at them. It's the second chapter of Luke, and I'm just going to read a little bit of it. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as is written in the law of the Lord. All right, and they offered in sacrifice, according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. So what do we learn right there? Mary absolutely did not need purification, and yet she submitted to the human precept, the law of the Lord. She was setting an example and bringing him to the temple. But by doing that, she was answering another prayer. So let's take a look at that. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do uh, for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you may dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. So beautiful that God, you know, in his dedication to God, he had the Holy Spirit, that God guided him to get the greatest reward imaginable, to behold the Messiah, to see Jesus face to face, which is ultimately what we're all going for, right? That's our destiny. That's what we should be praying for. Now, the next person that was really blessed here, there was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow until the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. So again, we look at this and we say, how do we get 2020 vision? Well, how did they get it? How were they able to see the Messiah? There had to be other people in the temple didn't see it. Life of prayer and fasting. And let me tell you something, that is powerful. If you want to really move your life forward, if you want to really start... Um, it wasn't recording. If you want to really start seeing some progress in your spiritual life, start fasting. And it doesn't have to be a whole day. It could be half a day. It could be whatever it is you choose. It could be fasting from TV. It could be fasting from a particular, um, maybe coffee for a day or something like that. Watch things change when you start doing that. That's going to give you the vision that you need. Now, the other mystery we want to focus on is the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. Now, when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem as was their custom. And when they left, they didn't notice that Jesus was, wasn't with them. Day went by and they start searching among their relatives and, oh no, he's not here. Can you imagine the anxiety that they had to feel? Like you give us God and we lose him? Let's face it. That's what happens when we sin, right? He gives us God, and yet we lose him by our, own, by our own fault. Now, this wasn't their fault. They finally find Jesus in the temple, and he's a little perplexed, like, why are you looking for me? Didn't you know I'd have to be in my father's house? So Jesus clearly had a higher mission. This was a prefigurement of the, or pre foreshadowing, I should say, of the three days that he would be in the, in the earth after his death, and they would be without him. But what we can learn from that is for those three days that they were looking, he was fulfilling God's mission. But what's really important after that is that he then was obedient to them. So again, we see Jesus, who's God, who's way above Mary and Joseph, submitting to the law and submitting to what's expected of him in his state in life. And I think that that is a real key for all of us, to be faithful to our state in life. Now, 
There's a lot of confusion, particularly in the church right now, and I've had friends even say to me, oh my God, what if they change church teaching? They're very concerned about that. And I think we have to think about this. We are called in our vocation as Christians to pray. It's not our job to criticize. It's not our job to question. We may have our concerns. That's perfectly natural. But we, we can't be thinking about leaving. We need to just stay united, to live the truth that we know, and to leave it to God to work it out. God, you know, God is in control, folks. This is his church. He has it well in hand. As much as things may look bad, that is, he's, he's got it. So just remain faithful. Stay close to the church. Stay close to the sacraments. And like I said, prayer and fasting. You want 2020 vision? I guarantee you, you will see a huge difference in your life. So that's our, our meditation for this first week of 2020. I wish you all a happy new year, a prosperous, healthy new year. And let's pray that God will really reveal truth on many, many, many fronts this year. Let's pray for 2020 vision and pray for people to have the grace to be open to that truth. So God bless you. And I look forward to talking to you next week.